Well, we want to take a few minutes to bring it on with some of your email questions. The first one is from Kaylee, who says, I am 16 and growing up. I was always taught about God and still am, but when my family watches preachers on TV or listens to them on the radio, I don't like it. I love to learn about God sometimes, but I'm worried that I'm going to be left behind in the rapture. My question is, why, why don't I like to hear about God all the time? Please help me. What do I do? Kaylee, you're not going to be left behind in the rapture. Uh, the rapture is for those who believe in Jesus, believe that he's the Son of God, that he came to earth, that he lived as a man, he lived a sinless life, and because of that, his blood is miraculous. It frees us from sin. It frees us from the penalty of sin. So that's the key to being part of the rapture. And if it makes you feel any better, I sometimes don't like li listening to <laughs> preachers. I want to do other things. So, you heard uh, it here. If you, if, you, if, you, if you always are, are listening and you, you're feeling guilt, that you, you know, it's, that's just not a good place. Here's a word. I guarantee you will have never heard this in a pulpit before. But it's from Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 16. These are the words of Solomon. Do not be overly righteous, nor be overly wise. Why should you destroy yourself? Realize that you can, you can take trying to be perfect to extremes that literally destroy your life. And realize Jesus came that you might have life and have it more abundantly. So you would be free from the law of sin and death. So Kaylee, live your life and don't be worried about the rapture. If you believe in Jesus and you live for him, uh, that's all that's required. This is Mary who says, what does the verse, my people perish because of lack of knowledge mean? My people, are they Christian believers or Jewish believers? And what knowledge is the Bible speaking of? Well, Mary, let's look at the verse that you're quoting. It comes from Hosea chapter 4, verse 6. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because you have rejected knowledge. I will also reject you from being priest for me. Because you have forgotten the law of your God, I will also forget your children. Uh, so the uh, my people here applies to all who are believers and all who call upon the name of the Lord. I wouldn't separate it out as is just for Israel. Now, what knowledge did they reject? Well, you find it in the same chapter in Hosea. It's in the first verse. Hear the word of the Lord, you children of Israel, for the Lord brings a charge against the inhabitants of land. There is no truth or mercy or knowledge of God in the land. Uh, and this would be one for America today. Do we know God anymore? Uh, do we fear him? Uh, and the evidence you, of, of the rejection you find in the second verse in the same chapter. By swearing and lying, killing and stealing and committing adultery, they break all restraint with bloodshed upon bloodshed, where literally that, that Hebrew there is the blood is washing over itself. It keeps washing over that, you know, there's so much murder, there's so much violence, there's so much death, there's so much swearing, there's so much adultery. That's the intent of this verse where he, he says, I am going to reject you. And that's why the people perish. So the, the turnaround is to get to know God. And when you know him and know the peace that comes from him, you no longer want to do these things. Uh, swearing and lying, want to leave. Murder, definitely. I mean, you, 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 if you have the knowledge of God, you can't kill someone that's made in the image of God. So these things are all, you know, why the, the curse comes and why the people perish because of lack of knowledge. It's the knowledge of him that leads to true wisdom.